uh, placebo-controlled fashion to either essentially double-dose clopidogrel or standard-dose clopidogrel and followed them for six months. We also followed a random cohort of patients with lower levels of platelet reactivity and followed them on standard-dose clopidogrel, 75 milligrams a day. The efficacy endpoint was cardiovascular death, non fetalmire or stent thrombosis. And we repeated platelet function testing in a blinded fashion at 30 days and at six months. The, we reported the primary results at late Blakin clinical trials at, in, at AHA last year. This was a neutral trial, high-dose clopidogrel, performed no better than standard-dose clopidogrel in patients with high reactivity after PCI with a hazard ratio of 1.0. And if you compared the patients who had high reactivity versus low reactivity, both of whom were receiving standard-dose clopidogrel, uh, the patients with lower reactivity had numerically lower event rates, but this did not reach statistical significance. The uh, initial pharmacodynamic analyses were revealing two points. First, if you look at the yellow, and, and these are the, the blue are patients who got 75 milligrams, the yellow patients who got 150, that even with 150, there's a wide variability in the levels of on treatment reactivity over time. Also, if you look at the patients who had low reactivity and got 75 milligrams, those patients who had events were clustered around 230, and very few events happened in these patients who had very low levels of reactivity. So the objective of this analysis was to look at the relationship between platelet reactivity over the course of the trial and events. We pooled all the three study arms, given the lack of clinical efficacy of 150 milligrams, which provided about 2,800 patients. And we defined high treatment reactivity in two ways. One was 230, as pre-specified by the trial, and the other as a level of 208 or greater. And this was from data that was released after we started enrolling Gravitas and in the uh, proposed or, or the clinical trial design of the Trigger PCI randomized clinical trial, which was conducted in Germany and in the US and was halted prematurely. We um, did a Cox regression analysis and we looked both at the outcomes at 60 days, basically 30 days after the 30 day platelet reactivity uh, test, and at six months. So here are the results of, of the study. First, if you look at it, the, an unadjusted relationship, a PRU of less than 230 at 60 days and at six months was associated with a lower hazard, but this did not reach statistical significance, similar to the initial results of the overall trial. If you look at a PRU less than 208, patients who achieved this level of reactivity, either at, after PCI or at 30 days, had a significantly lower hazard for the primary efficacy endpoint at 60 days with a hazard ratio of 0 0.18, a p-value of 0 0.02, and at six months, with a hazard ratio of 0 0.43 and a p-value of 0 0.01, approximately half the risk of the events. We adjusted this for other clinical predictors of cardiovascular events in the trial, and you see the list here. Suffice it to say that at 60 days, even after adjustment for other clinical characteristics, including presentation with ACS, diabetes, longer stent lengths, a PRU less than 208 at baseline after PCI, or at 30 days was associated with a significantly lower hazard for cardiovascular events with a hazard ratio of 0 0.23 and a p-value of 0 0.047. This relationship was attenuated slightly at six-month follow-up after adjustment. The hazard ratio was similar. It was 0 0.48 unadjusted. Now at six months after adjustment, the hazard ratio is 0 0.54 with a p-value of 0 0.065. So a very strong trend. Well, what, what happened to the patients who got double-dose clopidogrel? If you look here on the left, less than half of the patients who started with high reactivity who were randomized to high-dose clopidogrel reached a PRU of less than 208 at 30 days. And the patients who had high reactivity who only got 75 milligrams, only a quarter of those reached a safe level of, of PRU of less than 208. And in that 150 group itself, the hazard ratio was only 0 0.48 for the patients who got to 208, meaning if there was a response to high-dose clopidogrel, those patients had about half the uh, risk of cardiovascular events. So in conclusion, in Gravitas, patients who achieved a level of on-treatment platelet reactivity of less than 208 PRU at 12 to 24 hours after PCI or during follow-up had a lower risk of subsequent cardiovascular events, even after adjustment for other clinical characteristics, which supports the prognostic utility of serial platelet function testing, supports current ESC and AHA guidelines, 
less than half of the patients who got 150 reached this level of, of PRU, which supports the hypothesis that an inf insufficient response to 150 milligrams contributed to the lack of an observed clinical effect in the trial. And this also um, suggests that alternative individualized strategies to improve patient outcomes after PCI merit further consideration. And I will leave it at that for questions. Thank you. And actually, the, the, the full trial is now available online uh, in circulation and will be published in the September 6th issue. And there's the, the reference at the bottom of the slide. Thank you. Any questions? Oh, hi, Sue Houston from the Heart Talk. Talk. Um, what implications for clinical practice does this have? So, um, first, I mean, it's, it's clear from this analysis first that platelet reactivity on clopidogrel, in, well, I should say, in the largest multi center clinical trial yet performed in predominantly elective patients on treatment reactivity while receiving clopidogrel was significantly associated with cardiovascular events. Um, and with a, a risk of about one half. Number two, it appears that the, the likely the major contributor to the, to the neutral result of gravitas was an insufficient pharmacodynamic response. And, and third, this suggests that, that more intensive antiplatelet therapy regimens uh, targeting a, le a lower level of, of PRU uh, may provide clinical benefit even in otherwise low risk populations. And that, finally, the fourth point would be that on treatment reactivity over time is important, so serial testing may help guide antiplatelet therapy. Yeah. Sorry. Um, and do we know that um, more, platelet, more potent antiplatelet agents will actually reduce the PRU? Yes, they will. So, um, there's been a number of studies using both prazagrel and ticagrelor transition for, that show, number one, that patients on either of those drugs uh, almost all have PRUs less than 208, uh, for the most part, clearly more than clopidogrel. And there's data that switching from clopidogrel to prazagrel also drives PRUs to those levels. Um, I would like to play the devil's advocate. Uh, how do you explain that a medication that works in only 25% of, of the patients has been used for such a long time in cardiology? So um, that 25% that, that number were patients who started with high levels of reactivity, which encompassed only 40% of the population. So if, if you start high, you'll drift down to a safe level only one quarter of the time. So if you look overall of the 5,400 patients who were screened, about half had PRUs greater than 208 who are at risk. This doesn't mean all these patients were, will have events, but they have about twice, in, in Gravitas, they had about twice the hazard for, for clinical events. This is actually consistent with data from Germany, from Hochholzer et al, who used a different uh, criteria from VASP, which showed that periprocedural events and events within the first 30 days were um, significantly higher in, in the 50 percent of patients who had higher levels of reactivity. So this is a hazard. This doesn't mean that all patients will have these problems. Thank you. More questions. Uh